Welcome back to the best the best tournament. My name is Dalcy bringing you the action live on the screen. Unfortunately, without Hexy for today, as he is feeling a little bit unwell. Couldn't make it today, but make sure you let him know that he's loved and missed here for day one. We hope to have him back for the rest of the tournament. It's a match you've all been waiting for. I suspect Odd Starver and the Gentleman versus Frisk and the Ankle Breakers too. Fog Whisperers, sweethearts of the Twitch community, hosts in Union in the Into the Fog broadcast that happened recently with Behavior now battling it out in cold-blooded spirit to determine who is the best of the best here in today's tournament. The map will be Grim Pantry. It will be Angle Breakers killing first, the gentleman surviving. Then after that, we will see Ott's rebuttal with his killer pick. Let's introduce the teams as i'm sure you're familiar with their captains but maybe you aren't with the rest of their teams on ankle breakers they are four friends the perfect team they say of friends with their fearless leader frisk who was a survivor long before whispering into the fog the bunny fang karari who makes killers wish they didn't just love her floppy ears the billy talks billy goat who knows how to grab competitors by the horns and the slivery squeaky snake who slips her way to victory this team is ready to break ankles, not hearts. And they're looking to showcase that friendship is all it takes to be the best in Dead by Daylight. Frisk will be captaining her team to victory, they hope, as well as killing first on Grim Pantry. Over in the other court is the gentleman, captained by Ot Starver. It's a group of the most handsome lads in the Dead by Daylight scene coming together for an absolutely once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to finally showcase their skills and prove to their haters, being obviously mum and dad, that they are more than just some low-life nerds locked in a basement abusing infinites and overpowered add-ons. They're actually uh, low-life nerds locked in a basement abusing infinites and overpowered add-ons that won $15,000 in Hexy's Best of the Best tournament. That's what they're here to prove. <laughs> and it looks like the plague has swallowed some... Slightly disgusting vomit because her camera is not clean. Vomiting on the generators, Frisk is going to be looking to try and control these generators for a little bit. And we'll see exactly how this one does play out. All these guys. Let's look at the perks that we do see. Frisk actually neglecting corrupt intervention here. Pop goes the weasel, blood echo, spirit fury, and hex no one escapes death. An interesting build, let's talk about that for a second. Blood Echo is a unique teachable perk from the Oni, which makes it so that the survivors, whilst injured, when a survivor is hooked, they will be exhausted for 45 seconds and have the hemorrhage status effect on them for, until they're healed. Now, because there's the plague, survivors are likely to not heal versus her infectious state, which causes the survivors to become broken until they cleanse at a full devotion. So... Risk is relying, I suppose, on the action that the survivors will not heal in this trial. The gentlemen have decided to hop on a generator finally, and you can see that Risk has made a way across. A little bit of vomit onto the generator. Oh, it hits Jack on the head. You can see Frisk. Is he going to claim that pull of corruption immediately? No, going to leave that for B for now. Items wise for the flame, she is allowed purples and below, I believe. I mean that she can't bring black incense or iridescent seal. In this one, Frisk has opted in to go for the severed toe, which uh, increases the infection rate of survivors from interactions. So that is when they vault windows, work generators, as such as well as Emetic Potion, which slightly increases the effectiveness of Vile Purge. Slightly strange to go for the Emetic Potion, when I believe there is uh, the emetic, Infected Emetic, which is a green add-on, which also increases your effectiveness. In fact, there's a, a purple add-on, Vile Emetic, that does it as well. So, strange, strange choice from Frisk, I will say. You can see in a chase now with ASAP, we'll switch to their point of view because of the drunken sailor camera ASAP looping very effectively a bit of a respect coming through from Frisk here currently ASAP 
looping towards the Grim Pantry building. The first generator has been completed. Two points on the board for the gentleman, and you can hear that generator at the top of the stairs being worked on as well. Almost done. Injured survivors, so I suspect that Frisk will switch targets. In fact, she has. Jack is that target, but Spring Burst gets him to safety here. At a fairly unsafe loop. Maybe medium, medium safety, you would argue. Once the pallet's thrown, very difficult to play as the survivor. And Jack's going to try and get as many loops out of this as possible. Gets the stun, but look at that Spirit Fury coming through. No enduring though, so the stun time is the full two seconds. And Jack gains a little bit of distance, despite the pallet break. Looks like the chase may have been dropped there. And Frisk just losing sight of the objective. And Jack gets, gets away scot-free. Chopper and Hayden now working in a generator. As Jack makes her way up towards the pier gen that ASAP is working. Frisk currently trying to find their way outside of the mini Grim Pantry, uh, the Grim Pantry building. Pressure mounted potentially a little bit. You can see nothing so far. The survivors staying out of line of sight. Jade and Hayden and Chopper almost done on their generator is going to be contested here. Here comes the bomb. It hits, but it's not going to be enough to dissuade these two from completing their generator. And that's the third, fourth done as well. The gentlemen are all over the ankle breakers currently. Eight points to zero, and there's not been a single down. Risk doing their best to chase down Chopper across pallets and everything. You can get a nice little sky cam from ASAP. Supplying the production value. Person being and Chopper has made their way all the way to the Grim Pantry building where they will join Jack on the generator above. ASAP coughing and I guess providing a little bit of understanding to the location here. And perhaps Frisk will opt to go and grab the corrupted pool of devotion. No, instead going through the chase here onto ASAP who vaults into a speed burst. That's the final generator done. ASAP gets an adrenaline speed burst away here, but cannot be healed through the broken status due to the way that that state effect prevents healing at all costs. Going to be trying to provide some distance here on the Grim Pantry building and a couple of loops or two. Oh no, Frisk! Down the hole, flushed away! By Jack, by ASAP, by Chopper, by Hayden. The gentlemen open the exit gate and Hayden will go oh. down to the hex. No one escapes Jeff. I forgot about it, but it's there. And the Hayden was not expecting it. That will be the first hook coming through from the Fog Whisperer. ASAP looking to cleanse, it seems, despite the ex know it and well frisk well, she's she's gonna face camp which is no surprise she wants to secure this kill ah uh, that's disgusting she's stuck or was the camera just bugged it definitely looks a little bit weird i don't think it matters though asap will escape here it is going to be a three-man escape hayden on the hook He's just going to share this moment with us. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I believe she may be stuck. <laughs> Look at the way the chain bends. What a strange circumstance we find ourselves here today. Gentlemen, 16 points, Angle Breakers 2 in game one of this match six. breakdown gentlemen with three escapes secure six points the full 10 plus for 
completing five generators. Unfortunately for the ankle breakers, Frisk only securing a single hook towards the end of the trial. And of course, the kill on to Hayden as well will mean that for the ankle breakers, they have an absolute impossible task ahead of them to try and come back into this trial. Not an easy one, you have to imagine. But I know if I was to have to face this scenario myself, it would be a perfect team of friends that I would want to face it with. We are loading into the trial here for Odd Starver versus the Ankle Breakers. We'll see exactly what he can bring to the table. Loading on in. Odd Starver showcases his pyramid head to us now. Corrupt Intervention, Hex, Ruin, Surveillance, and Haunted Grounds. A build purely hinging on one perk alone, that Hex, Ruin, to regress to the generators and give Odd Starver information as to where the survivors are. Surveillance currently will flash white when a survivor hops off of it, allowing the killer to know that that generator is no longer being worked when the survivor hops back onto it it flashes yellow for a period of time before settling on red giving the killer massive information x haunted grounds the unique teaching perk from the spirit will put two trap totems in the trial which will potentially increase the chance that that hex ruin survives a very fast down coming through from ostava here billy talk's going to be sent to a cage of atonement for those wondering how the scoring works the cage of atonement does count as a hook as well as the final judgment as well. I mean, Pyramid Head, a little bit more of an incentive perhaps to be played. Fun fact, Pyramid Head's Trial of Judgment. Uh, sorry, um, Punishment of the Damned can go down staircases and ramps and slopes, but it can't go up them. Not Starva knowing that will attack via the ramp there on the pier. First hook goes away, or cage, I should say, for Odd Starva, and you can see that surveillance flashing as I believe this is a squeaky snake hops off the generator. Now attempting to run away the rights of judgment. Purely just being used as the deterrent. Try and force the survivor to dodge and lose distance here. Odd Starver now chasing down. We do have a pallet heading up and you can see the survivor sitting on top of the Hex Ruin. And the constant killer's instinct. But Frisk has managed to get rid of the, the Hex. And that is actually Hex Ruin as well. A 33% chance, and it was the one that they were looking for. Hex Rune is gone, and Not Starver will send her to a cage to punish her for the, the deed. Billy Talks will link up with Karari, uh, Kiri now to hop on a generator, but the pressure mounts, and a skill check failed. Squeaky Snake looking to set up to save Frisk from the Dungeon of Doom. And once more, Billy Talks finds himself in a chase with the formidable Ot Starver. An attack through a wall lands directly at the feet of Billy Talks and a second hook coming his way. There's the rescue onto Fricks as we speak. Otz will look to hook over towards this. It's a little bit unfortunate though for Otz Starver as uh, anyone who plays Pyramid Head would know the ideal situation is to have the survivor tormented at this moment. So that when they come off the hook, you can either send them to a cage or in this circumstance use final judgment to kill them. Oddstarver losing his Hex Ruin so early has lost his only source of gen regression here. Oh, no! Squeaky Snakes has located a, a glowy. If it glows, it goes. Oof, Oof indeed. That's Haunted Grounds. For the next 60 seconds, the survivors are exposed and Oddstarver will be able to basic attack them to down them. And this is the worst time you could have for a Haunted Grounds pop as Billy Talks is on their hook and the rescuing is a impossible situation if Ostarba wants to secure it. Is going to be Frisk located and hooked, you can see. I believe that's Kairi attempting to make the rescue. Can they get there in time? They can, but no borrowed time. Which will put Billy Talks in a difficult position. On the ground, still active for another 15 seconds. Kairi will go down for the basic attack of the Executioner. And into the cage she goes. Billy Talks looking to 
rescue Frisk from their second hook here. But again, no borrowed time, and here comes that ranged attack with hit. Nearly talks. Dodged out by Frisk. Both of these survivors on their death hook at five generators remaining. And Odd Starver racking up the points as we speak. A reminder that a final judgment counts as both a hook and a kill in this scenario. Meaning that Odd Starver will secure the full two points for removing Billy Talks from the trial here. The gentlemen are steam rolling ahead. Chris now attempting to complete a generator. Decisive strike is there, but she is tormented, so you can't imagine that will have any effect. Squeaky Snake now. Whoa, that is scary. <laughs> the sprint first to try and get distance into the window and a hit through the wall. I think we'll stick on Ostava for now because that was not a sight that anyone wanted to see. That's going to be a kick on the generator. Surveillance will give us information if the survivor is ever to... Retap that generator later on the trial. That's going to be the first hook here for Squeaky Snake. Brisk 50% on her generator. Kayri. That 40 on the Grim Pantry gen. And Ott has sniffed out the Bunny Fang. He runs straight into the loving arms of the Executioner. Or not so loving arms, perhaps. They've fallen down. That pallet drop was from below. Ots will sniff this one out. Looking for an attack through the wall. Perhaps. A little bit cheeky. But not today. The blood located. Pallet vault. To an untimely demise. Kairu will find themselves on their second hook as Squeaky Snake left to hang as Frisk secures the first generator for the ankle breakers, putting them up to four points. Look at this. Due to the generator popping, Hot Starver wants to finish this here and now, looking for Frisk and charging up the rights of judgment to land a ranged attack not necessary. Basic will do the trick. A final judgment will secure the deal onto Frisk. For two points over towards Ot Starver's killer. And Kairi left on the floor without a means of relieving themselves from the dying state. This is a GG for the Headless Pyramid Head. Not a sight that anyone needs to see. Ot Starver has come here to the Grim Pantry to showcase why he is considered one of the best in Dead by Daylight and versus Frisk's team of friends. An absolute masterclass of Pyramid Head was displayed here in the best of the best tournament. Final score, I believe, will be 29 to 4. There it is. The points racking up on the screen. As the gentlemen secure victory in their round of 16 matchup here versus the Angle Breakers, a battle of the Fog Whisperers. Left one sided. Zot Starva captains his team to a victory. Nine hooks, four kills, three escapes, and five generators. Racks up those points for the gentlemen and for the ankle breakers. It was the solo generator with a hook and a kill, which makes up those four. Commiserations to the ankle breakers. It was lovely to have you here. But unfortunately, this is where we do say goodbye. Perhaps production's prediction was correct from earlier. Now we do get to see that blood strike true. Through the ankle breakers hearts the gentlemen progress to day two of our tournament joining pulse oracle agony invincible kittens and team canapec and what has been an excellent beginning to our tournament next up shift W Gamers, Malika's Band of Merry Men will take on North American Azure.
what should be an excellent matchup. I can't wait to see it. We will throw it to a short break. When we do return, Chef W Gamers versus Azure. <laughs> 